Hey guys, welcome to number 10 of the Derby Crime of Life, and to start off this episode, we're still in the January transfer window, we've got one more fixture left against Burnley. Should be, well, I say it should be an easy game, but Burnley are actually in the top four, I think, we, they, yeah, they smashed us 3-0 just a month ago, so, be interested to see how we do at home. It's, it's kind of crazy how different the uh, results are at home and uh, away, looking at where Burnley are then, they're in fourth of the table, just with uh, Bournemouth, and then there's teams like below us, Arsenal, Spurs... And we're, we're only four points off the relegation zone, so it's not like we're doing amazingly well. We're probably doing about right. It may get a bit tougher towards the end of the season when we pick up a few injuries and so. Um, and I was just thinking, what, what do we actually need to sign? Because I'm looking at this squad, and it's quite big. <laughs> like I don't really need to. Obviously, we've got Kerr out to the end of the season. Jerry should be back in a couple of weeks. Um, but we don't exactly need anything, especially with Mason Bennett coming back now. We've essentially got the... Backup wingers, plus this threat he can play out wide. So, I'm not 100% sure. That's like the only area that I might be tempted to bring in somebody at winger, just on loan. Looking at the transfer hub, um, I have actually added a couple of players here. A few on pre-contract signings, such as Emerson, Niang, and I think there's one other in... I think it was Tom Kearney. So, we'll try and get those. I've just backed out for some reason. Um, but we'll try and get those on pre-contracts for a decent price. And that's maybe what I'll all do. I don't know if I really want to... I was looking at Joe Art because his contract also ran out, but it looks like he's had it extended. Would be a pretty cool player, though, to bring to the club, of course. A very good experienced keeper in the Premier League. We don't really have that at the moment, obviously. Blake with the gloves at the moment. Or Brighton was a suggestion from you guys. Whether we do sign him or not at 29 years old, maybe, maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. And then we've got these three players here, Joe Gomez, uh, Ojo, and Luckman. All three of these we probably could get on loan. I'm probably looking at Ojo and Luckman a bit more. I don't, I don't really need Gomez unless we get an injury. Uh, yeah, a big injury to one of our defenders from now until the end of the window. Um, but I want to put most of my money into Emerson, Yang, and um, Kenny because they're they're really like Kenny's worth ten. Niang's probably worth about ten fifteen, and uh, Emerson probably around six or seven. So you could save a lot of money. We have obviously already brought in uh, Jeff Hendrick all the way at the bottom of the short list here on a pre-contract. Great signing. And I think with a lot of players going out, we will have that uh, wage available. So that's what I'll do now and just uh, have a look what we can get. Especially with the budget that we do have remaining. We've only got half a million plus 50 grand in wages. I think doing one or two pre-contracts would probably be the best financially. Because especially those Liverpool players, Ojo and Gomez, I'm sure they'll be on quite a bit. Luckman might be an achievable buy. And he might be what we need, you know. Because with Jerry being out for a couple of weeks, he's, he's not exactly blistering fast. But Adimola Luckman would bring that to the club. So maybe maybe I'll look to get him. I would like to bring him on loan. I think that's what we'll do first. Because the thing is with the pre-contracts, they may just not... like They may stay at the club for another year. And then we can just pick them up for super cheap. I think out of them, probably Niang would be the most interesting. Tom Kearney, I'm 50-50 with. It's, he's worth 10 mil. You make quite a bit of money. Plus, he's a pretty good player anyway. Um, but would he get in ahead of Vidra and Ciceretti? You'd have to wait and see. So let's go and approach to loan because we do need that bit of pace that can play up front. And hopefully that's what uh, Ronald Koeman, who has actually been sacked, uh, was it today or yes? It would have been yesterday now. So one of them, it's like, do we do short or do we do one year? Because the problem is with the short, I think it does actually end. I don't know if it ends at the end of the season or it ends in like a month. Because I can't quite remember. I think we'll go for the one year. Because even if we keep him until next January, I'll be more than happy with that. So they're happy with the one year loan. So that's good to see. Now it's seeing how much Everton are willing to pay. Because I'd like Everton to do 60-40. Because they're, they're obviously a much bigger club than us. And we do need as much money as we can. I know it only saves like 4k. But the more the merrier. There we go. They're happy with that. So it's all down to Luckman now. Whether he wants to join the club or not. That's what I kind of like about um, loan deals this year because the player may not want to join the club and also you don't really see that many players loan listed so you have to definitely try and get them um, obviously we do have Ojo if, if we do need that backup option but Luckman's a bit more of a striker and that's probably what we need a bit more hasn't got the best of skill moves but it's all about that pace going into Niang's uh, contract then I probably will give him crucial because he, he is a really good player on um, well, all, all together, all FIFA game modes, he's absolutely fantastic. Obviously, a lot of pace can play pretty much anywhere and beyond the striker and at striker. So, 
would be quite good. He's, he's more of a long-term Adimola Luckman. That's what Niang is, in fairness. But we'll give him a... Do we give him a four or five? I think we give him four, because if you give him five, then they'll just want a little bit more money. The problem is here, just like the Danny Ings deal, I don't want to annoy him. So we don't want to give him too little amount of money. Also, I don't want to give him too much money. So I'm going to go... We'll go... Because our top earners at the moment are on 40 grand. I think it's about 45, actually. So we'll give him 42. Knock that down to 250. Just so we can save as much money as we can. And we may be able to squeeze one more pre-contract with the remaining budget we do have. Ah, oh, so we haven't sorted him with those wages. So maybe he's on a lot more money. But I think we may still have time to actually get him again. So it may refresh and we have the option uh, to negotiate in the future. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for. We still do have um, Kearney, Emerson. So... I may just wait for their scouts to come back so we do get a precise price because there is still a good week left in... Well, it's not quite a week. It's about five days left in this window. So we will go into the game now against Burnley. Van Al not there going to... Uh, I think that's... Yeah, that's a Brazilian league, so that's quite interesting. But yeah, looking at the table, we do have a game in hand on Spurs, who are 12th. And if we win our game, we'll go basically above them. It's, we can't really go much higher if we win games now. It's, it's we, we will have to pick up a few wins on a bounce. And with Burnley being in fifth, it's it's going to be a tough one. Looking at the Burnley team, then they've gone for a 4-2-3-1, just like us. It is a very similar... I think it's pretty much the same team they did play against us just a month ago. Um, maybe they didn't... I don't think they had Chris Wood up front, actually. That may be one change they have made. I think they had Ashley Barnes. Um, and Ryan Fraser on the right as well. I think he's a new signing. So, pretty decent team. Obviously, Jeff Hendrick will be playing for us next season. It's nice to see him in the midfield, though. Playing consistently for Burnley, who are in a Champions League spot. So... Valued very highly. I think we will probably... I don't know what we'll do because I'm really enjoying Hansen and Hughes at the moment. And when Hendrick comes in, where, where are we going to play Hendrick? Are we going to maybe push out Vidra, but play a bit more defensive? Or do we maybe go to a three in the midfield? Ball inside to Simon here. Chance to get the shot off and he has. And we have found the back of the net there in the first 20 minutes. A great start to the game against Burnley. They really haven't been very good going forwards. They've got to the halfway line, maybe Chris Wood up front, bit isolated, picked it off him and um, we managed to counter attack and get the goal with Moses Simon I think he's been a fantastic signing like you look back at what that deal was uh, this time last season we paid 4 million plus Sam Winnell who was he was alright but it was a bit of a glitch and um, yeah we do desperately need to at least get a point from this game because if we lose it then um, we'll only be a point off the relegation zone so we really don't want that to happen ball through for Brady he's gone through on goal with the shot and it has gone under Blake's arms and gone into the back of that really really frustrating goal because it's literally one through ball out wide to the Irishman who is on our short list a player I would like to bring in obviously Sean Dyche there maybe a different club by the time this video does go up because he has been linked with both Leicester and Everton but yeah it was I don't know maybe Wisdom just pushed up a little bit too much gave that space to Brady Second goal this season for him and the back in the game. We do need a point as well, so I wouldn't mind just shutting up shot and making that the result. Corner for Burnley, two minutes to go to half time. Definitely don't want to concede at this point, and we have. Oh, it's really frustrating. Because it's literally the last 40 minutes, haven't, haven't really seen much. I think that's Baumgartlinger from um, the Bundesliga. I think he's an Austrian centre back from, I want to say Gladbach, but I don't think it is them. Yeah, it's gone into the pretty much edge of the box. And then, I'm not 100% sure why he's not offside. Maybe we had a man on the line, but he has got a goal there. Maybe it's not Baumgart Linker. Maybe it's just a guy called Baumgart Le. But we've got a chance here to run at the defence. Now with the shot. And it has gone into the bottom left-hand corner, just like our first goal. Really important that we've got the equaliser as well before the end of the half. I know Burnley did just score literally two minutes ago. We want on the attack, Solanke just laying off. Really good run, actually, from Moses Simon to pull. I think that's Danny Ward, the left back, inside, and um, just gave the space for Vidra to run into. And it's nice to see him get a goal. I don't think he's actually scored in a while, but that should be his 10th, 9th. So he's only one off 10 now. Maybe we can get him in this game. Corner of them for Burnley. It's gone into the box this time, and it has been headed straight into the goal. No need for the flick on, and it is Jeff Hendrick. I don't get why he's celebrating like this. I kind of wish EA would add a bit more, I don't know, perspective on things like if a player has played for a club and, I don't know, it's a little bit weird, but he has scored against us. Why is Moses Sarma marking him? I just realised that there. Nobody's really marking him, but the closest man was the shortest man on the pitch. And, um, yeah, he scored against us. I believe, yeah, his first goal of the season. 
Again, we're, we're going to have to get back into it because I need a point. Now into the Italian with the shot. And straight away, literally, has just taken his first and second touch there to find the back of the net. And make it 3-3, a six-goal thriller so far in this one. Nice to see him linking up nicely with, um, I think that was Solanke. Solanke's been involved pretty much with every goal this game. Ball inside there, back to him. Really nice pass, actually. And um, did that go through Tarkovsky's legs? It may have. And uh, I'm not going to complain over the top if Jordan Ive. It's just about got through to him. Tarkovsky, though, in the way. Back to Simon with the shot now. And he has found the back, that left-hand side of the goal. I know he scored at the other end, but we've literally, every single uh, chance we've made so far and got on target has gone to that side and found the back of the net. And the Nigerian has made it 4-3. A goal we definitely need going into the last 15 minutes. The AI, they chuck so many players forwards. And I'm, if you look at the amount of games I've conceded in the last 10, 15 minutes, it's probably wise that we may not win this, but we may have won a point at least by getting that goal. Burnley are bringing it forwards. It is pretty much the last attack of the game. Now with Albright, and he's gone inside with the shot. And he's gone to that top left-hand corner to make it 4-4 really annoying because you just the amount of men that go forwards in the last 10-15 they're, they're always guaranteed a goal so you, you kind of have to have that buffer and the man that we are currently scouting to potentially sign I may not get him because he is 29 years old how many years are we getting it out of him I'm not 100% sure but I think it's Jeff Hendrick with the assist as well if it wasn't for Jeff Hendrick if we just signed him, like, I probably would have if um, it gave me the option. But it's kind of annoying how you can only sign players on pre-contracts now in January. Since I did sell um, two players, uh, Baratton and um, Baluti, I probably could have afforded Jeff Hendrick now. But because of that, we've managed to pick up a point, which is a lot better than what we did last time, in fairness. We did um, at least get something from the game. And the last time we did lose 3-0, but as you can see... Four shots for us, four goals. Five shots for only four goals. It's a very... You have to be clinical now with these sliders. So Bournemouth are approaching Tom Huddleston with a pre-contract agreement. It's kind of crazy how Bournemouth are fifth in the table, but they're looking for a player like Huddleston. As you can see, the one-year loan here for Adimola Luckman has been accepted. A player that was actually linked to Derby in real life, but it's kind of crazy how they haven't really played him, even though they paid quite a bit of money for him. He is 69 rated at the moment, but he's got that pace. If you look at him compared to Jerry, now Jerry's got a lot better acceleration however his balance his sprint speed just aren't quite as good and, and when you're quite tall it doesn't feel like you're fast however Luckman he's fast so with 82 dribbling as well that will help going forward it's very similar finishing so definitely an option off the bench in my opinion Luckman does kind of mean dropping Mason Bennett which is a bit of a shame but I don't think Mason Bennett quite has that pace he doesn't quite have that technicality as well with the dribbling at only 68 and uh, 70 finishing probably not quite good enough and he is he is older as well so it's it's one of them but still plenty of time left in the season to get him some game time so i'll try and negotiate kenny first very good player still and worth 10 million that's the thing emerson will probably only be worth six or seven so value wise we'll get we'll get more for our money doing this and um he's, he's quite versatile so they're looking for 62 grand in wages and then a signing on bonus of just under a million and appearance bonus of 1.4 after 20 appearances so what I'm going to do is remove the bonus. So when it negotiates down, it goes to 32.5 plus 800k signing on bonus, which is way less than what he was on before. It's just kind of annoying because, like, there's so many players leaving the club at the end of the year, but I just don't have that money to use right now. I don't know if it's better to put more money into wage or more money into signing on bonus. That's the only thing. I don't know if it'll convince him more. I'm going to have to try and get Emerson again. don't really know what his um, wage is, so... Bit of a stab in the dark. They're going to look for crucial, so we'll give him that. He is, he's around 75 to 80 rated, so will be slightly better than low. And he's, he's got that pace as well. So the wage again. I want to keep a little bit of money just so if players need contracts negotiating, we can we can always do that. Plus, they don't want to pay him too much. Um, so we'll go... I think we'll go 40 grand in wages and 300k signing on bonus they they may be up to negotiating as well that's what i'm kind of hoping if it does go pear-shaped as you can see they have 5k less wage however after 10 clean sheets they do want a 500k bonus problem is with this it doesn't like if i show you now that 500k just gets put back into the budget it doesn't actually 
it doesn't actually take the budget away when he gets the 10 it takes it away now so it's it's, it's really pointless in my opinion the bonuses this year because they don't they don't work like they do on football manager like after that period of time that money will get taken away it just gets taken away right now so it's really pointless to actually add bonuses so they have negotiated slightly i don't want to annoy him as well because it is literally the only play i've got left so we will be accepting that yeah i think that's a fair price he's under 40 grand wages for a first team player that's that's more than enough if, if you look at our current first team wage structure um we've got we've got jerry on quite a bit but the thing is with the striker they are going to be on quite a bit of money but other than that everyone else is under 50 i think yeah joe ledley he's going probably probably pretty soon i'm hoping somebody puts a bid in for him tom huddleston's going we've got keo going nugent going and carson and bryson so you've, you've got a good hundred and maybe even 200k there yeah at least 200k in wages transfer offer for jordan Knight from west ham very good offer as well at 12 and a half million be interested to see what his actual value is it's up to 20 million that is quite a bit we we paid i think it was three plus a catchy annu who was worth just under two so call it about five mil <laughs> that is a lot of money and he's not exactly in the frame as well. He's, he does come off the bench and do a decent job, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind negotiating. If if he can get over 20 mil, then I'd be more than happy with that. If we can get like 22, 23, Slavin Bilic here, maybe sacked by the time this video does. It's crazy how many managers at the moment are on the chopping board. I'm going to just add 10 mil to their offer because that puts it up to 22.8, and that is a crazy return on what we actually paid in terms of we paid 3 million. And then that's another 20 mil on top of that. It looks like they, yeah, they've literally only got 12 mil. So they're just looking to get a play of that price. But it's good to know that he's up to that price. And he's still, he's still got loads of ratings to grow as well. Looking at the table then, we are currently in 13th. About to play Arsenal We're on exactly the same record as us. Six wins, eight draws and eight losses. We've scored a lot more and conceded a lot more. But we're on exactly the same goal difference as well. So it's kind of creepy that Arsenal are pretty much identical to us. It's good to see Spurs have picked up a few points and uh, climbed up the table a little bit. They're only five points, in fairness, off the top six, seven. Um, so the table's kind of finding itself quite nicely. We're still in a bit of a danger area. We're still five points off if we lose this big game against Arsenal. may look a bit pear-shaped, but that, that point we picked up against um, Burnley, really important, because you just, you just look at that difference between, um, like, when you go from 13th to 15th it really does put you into a bit of a danger area so we are going to go into the game against Arsenal there are a few big fixtures coming up if I just show you now we've got Arsenal now and then City Southampton aren't exactly easy um, Chelsea so it's a bit of a tough run towards the end of the season there's, there's not exactly I'd say that last four are quite that last month in fairness is quite easy we've got Leeds Newcastle West Ham and Crystal Palace all teams below us so pretty decent in that terms but that month of April it may screw us and the month of in fairness West Brom and Leicester are very good there's no doubt about that so it's not going to be easy to stay in this position but we're going to have to try and do it from now until the end of the season we have got Jerry back from injury as well so that's good to see we'll be giving Arsenal there I think yeah we'll give them that alternate kit just a bit of a different thing to see probably go with the same lineup what I'd actually do because last time problem is we'd have to drop Vidra to do it. Last time we played against Arsenal, we played a 4-3-3 and absolutely dominated them. In that last game, we were a little bit defensively shit, basically. So we do need to be wary. I'm going to probably take Martin out of the team altogether because he's he's not really an impact sub. You start him in the game, but he's, you can't bring him off the bench. That's the problem in real life at the moment. Gary Rout brings him on for the last 20 minutes. He, he can't play that way. That's You just can't do that with Chris Martin. He has to start the game and to be any use so we will have Luckman on the bench whether we do play Jerry it'll be a question of um, how the game goes the question is do we play that formation just to just to get us on the front foot from the start I think we do I think it would be just silly if we didn't do that so let's change it to the 4-3-3 let's have a look at the Arsenal team then for today's game they are playing that formation so it's good to see that we are playing this tactical decision it's a bit of a stronger team than last time I do remember um, no Sanchez was in the team no Ozil in the team Martinez obviously signed from Bayern Munich um, with Burnout it's, it's kind of interesting they both signed 
both the Spaniards. Maybe Thiago is on the way as well. It's a very good team. Obviously, uh, Mertesacker was in the defence last time, which was a bit of a problem for them. But with Javi Martinez, a bit of a better player, of course. And um, I hope our tactical decision does pay off. Let's see if Simon's run through. He's got a bit of space than two defenders have bumped into each other. Czech makes a save, though. The thing is with Czech, compared to other Premier League goalkeepers, he's probably like 83, 82 rated now, as he is so old. But good clearance off the line there from, I think that's Sidibe. Back into the middle. He's in a bit of space. Thorn with the volley. And we've got the goal on the stroke of half time. From the same man who won us the last game against Arsenal. George Thorne with that captain's armband. Seems to just do great bits against them. He's in the right place. Where my striker should really be. Um, left footed volley. Not much that Arsenal can do really. Chance for Jerry to get a second. And hopefully kill off the game. He's got the shot off. Found the top right hand corner. And the Nigerian just coming back from injury. I thought I'd bring them off because... Uh, bring off Solanke and bring him on because if you don't do that basically you can't start him in the game so it's, it's a little bit of a annoying thing because eventually the player would just not get injured anymore but really nice bit of link up play actually he's just waiting for the run eventually gets it and then right into that top right hand corner obviously Czech's going to be what is he like 35, 36 he's going to be at least 82 maybe even 80 rated at this point and that is his first Premier League goal he did score against, um, it was in the FA Cup against Everton, he did get a goal, but obviously first in the league. Good to see him get some goals as well, not, not like Beretton, who we paid basically our last striker. Um, didn't really go down too well, but Arsenal straight on the attack here with Sidibe. Dunk though, clearing nicely. And there it is, full time against Arsenal. We have picked up six points against the Invincibles. Obviously it's not this team, but still Arsenal. And um, yeah, I don't know if it's because Czech is so old and um, not very good anymore he's probably probably like 79 80 rated by now and um, probably quite easy to score against him and that's probably why Arsenal are so low but maybe some of his other stats have kept his rating at high but like his actual goalkeeping stats are very low I've realized that with Carson even though he's still 73 rated he's probably not a 73 rated goalkeeper if that makes any sense in between the two episodes I'm going to sort out some of the contracts for some um, first team players such as Vidra Thorne and a few others so we've got that money may as well do it it's not exactly a fun thing to do as well it's just literally negotiating and even if we get it wrong now um like five months down the line we'll still have the opportunity to do it again obviously thorn and vidron decent wages as well i don't want to push them up too much and um kind of bankrupt us but we have got a, we've got a lot of players leaving i'm going to work out how much this all adds up to um because we we probably ha will have quite a bit of wages going into the next season that's that's the one thing with this squad there's a lot of players and all those players are on very similar wages. there's no there's no standout and that's probably what we'll be able to do with all the money we do generate like zanzali has been at the club for the last two years literally haven't played a game with him he's just sat on the reserves because he doesn't even want to go out on loan so we're going to wrap it up there. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode. We are very nicely placed and 13th at the table. So leave a like if you did enjoy it and uh, see you soon. Bye.